Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you 5 ways that you can create more realistic guitar parts in your DAW, right after this. Hello everyone, to start off today I want to share with you a story. And my story is when I was growing up, when I was in uh, secondary school, high school, when I was a teenager and I was growing up, I was the keyboard player amongst my friends, okay? And we had several bands and we were playing music, we would go to studios and rehearse and play lives and all these things. And funnily enough, back then, synths were not cool. Keyboards were not cool. The coolest thing was playing the guitar. So every one of my friends wanted to have a Strat, they wanted to have a new amp, they wanted to have all these great guitar tones. I was really good with playing the piano, but the cool thing was the guitar. So my friends, one after the other, they started buying guitars. And I was like, Ugh! I loved guitars and I wanted to also be able to play the guitar. So this is maybe a topic for another video because I'm a completely self-taught guitarist. I have never had a single guitar lesson in my life, but I can play uh, and I can play very well for production needs. Uh, I'm not like an amazing guitarist by any stretch of the imagination. But back then, all I had was my keyboard and I had to learn to create realistic guitar parts. I wanted to imitate what they were doing on their guitar. And actually, sometimes I could do it better on the keyboards. They were still learning, so it's understandable. Now, the other reason why I needed to learn how to create realistic guitar parts was when I started working for advertising and I had to create jingles, I had to create library music, and for all these things there was no budget for hiring a real guitarist. There was not really even budget for me to go into the trouble of setting up microphones and recording myself playing the guitar. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and create realistic guitar mock-ups so that I can produce more music. And to be honest with you, none of my clients complained back then. That was the reason actually and I've never talked about this in any of my previous videos, why I bought my first Yamaha Motive. It was because it had the best acoustic sounds out there back in the day, and in my opinion still does, the montage. And that's why I got it. I didn't care about synth sounds because I could create synth sounds on my own, but acoustic guitars, flutes, and all these things, I couldn't just create them from scratch. The samples had to be good. So all these things combined gave me enough incentive to learn how to play realistic guitar parts on the keyboard. And like with the finger drumming, if you haven't watched the video on the finger drumming, I'm going to leave it right here. I had to do this out of necessity. I had to learn how to do this because of the things that I was doing. And I couldn't just give up and say, no, you know, there's no way you can do this. You can do this. So in this video, I'm going to show you some tricks that I learned along the way that I found that they contribute a lot to creating realistic guitar parts. So, let's get started. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do me a solid and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and of course share it. So let's start with the first tip. And in my opinion, the first tip that I have to give you is do not treat a guitar like it's the piano, okay? It's a completely different instrument, it's a completely different philosophy, it's a completely different mindset. The first thing we need to respect is what? We can only play up to six notes at a time. You can't play more than six notes at a time. I see many people loading an acoustic guitar patch and they start playing like chords that are all over the place. That's not possible. You have to remember the range of the guitar, the guitar can only play six notes at the time and not at the same time. I'm going to come back to this later. So when you start playing, you should keep that in mind. For example, see, even when I play like a full chord, I have the, okay, let's say the F here, one, two, three, four, five, okay? I can add more, so maybe I can go... But I shouldn't play more than six notes at a time. This is very, very important. So when I play the guitar on the keyboard, instinctively by now, I'm just playing up to six notes.
So this is my first tip. Don't go and try playing like a keyboard player, playing like a pianist. This is the worst thing. Or having massive spaces between the notes. For example, that's, that's not gonna happen. You know, if you're a guitarist, you know that, okay, this F is on the first fret and this is all the way down to, you know, 15th fret or whatever. So there's no way you can play this on a real guitar. It's impossible. So you have to keep in mind that you should try and keep your voicing as compact as possible and try and understand that you can't play like super large intervals. So this is tip number one and this basically applies to acoustic guitars, it applies to nylon guitars, classical guitars, it applies to electric guitars, it doesn't matter. It's still a guitar, you can't play more than six notes. Actually, six notes is the limit and you should strum them. And that brings me to point number two. Strumming is extremely important for guitars. If you have like um, pick style acoustic, like what I have here, here I'm using T guitar from Acoustic Samples. This is an instrument that you can load in Halion Sonic. And this is a picked guitar. Now, if you're playing with a pick, again, there is no way that you can play all six notes simultaneously. You have to strum them. And that's the tip number two, strumming. Strumming is the most important thing if you want to create realistic guitar parts. Now, if you're a keyboard player, like myself, this is going to be so, so much easier. If you're not a keyboard player, I'm going to show you how to do this in a different way. But let me show you how it sounds if you start strumming and if you don't strum, okay? For example, let's play like a well-known track. So see, I'm strumming all the time. I'm never playing. I can do this, but see the, the difference that it makes? Let me turn off legato for a second so I can show you the difference. Okay, let's play without strumming. And that's what most people, most pianists do when it's their first time playing the guitar on the keyboard. See, I, I, I can't even do it. I do it instinctively. I'm, go, I'm gonna try this time. Or oh, that kind of thing. Okay? Now, without changing any parameter on the instrument, I still keep legato off. Check out the difference that it makes when you start articulating this strumming. Massive difference compared to... This is... This is fake guitar. This is fake guitar. But if you go... Much, much better. In the context of an arrangement, it's going to be really hard to tell sometimes if it's a real guitar or if it's a sampled guitar. Now, I'm going to show you a different example here. I have this acoustic guitar from T Guitar, but I also have this one here. This is the nylon guitar from Ilya Efimov. It's one of my favorite nylon guitar libraries. Let's listen to how this sounds. So this is... Again, I'm strumming. This is, of course, a different type of guitar. This is a nylon guitar. This is more usual for classical music, for Latin music, for jazz. So again, you should try and do a little bit of strumming. But if you do finger style playing, and many classical guitarists do that, then you might be able to get away with playing some more regular chords without so much strumming. So, when you have like picked sounds, you want to do more strumming. When you have finger style, then you might be able to get away with some. Because 
because they tend to go like this, you know, they tend to pick all of the strings at once. So this is not a problem if you want to play some chords, but again, you have to have a little bit of... So you don't have to do necessarily... It's still going to be okay if you do like normal chords, but again, I wouldn't do more than maybe three notes at a time, four tops, but not five, not six, not this. That's not natural, okay? Now, when it comes to strumming, I have two more tips to show you. But before I show you these two more tips, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like us, musicians. So if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure that you might be the person that might want to learn about learning how to play the keyboard, learning how to play the guitar, learn about music theory, music harmony, all those beautiful things that I talk about on my channel. Or you might be a super creative personality that jumps from topic to topic, from photography to videography to music to production to painting. Skillshare has a class for you, whatever you want to do. As you know, I recently released my modern 80s drum kit and for this instrument I had to do pretty much everything myself. I did the design, I did the graphics, I did pretty much everything and Skillshare gave me a lot of help when I was trying to do this because I'm not a designer, I'm not a graphics designer. So this month I've been checking out the graphic design basics, core principles for visual design from Ellen Lupton and this gave me a lot of information to get started, starting to understand how design works, what are the concepts because it starts with concepts like symmetry versus symmetry, scale, framing, hierarchy, grids. So these are all skills that might be really, really important when you're trying to find different paths for your creativity. And the great thing is that Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And for the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link below in the description, you will get a free trial for the premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the guitars. Now, like I said, I have two more tips to help you create nice strums if you're not a keyboard player. And one of the tips is inside Cubase. So let me show you, let me go here and create a part. I'm going to show you how you can create very, very easy strums inside Cubase. So I'm gonna play a very plain chord. So, what can you do inside Cubase? In Cubase, we have a tool called the Trim Tool, and it's this one right here. With this tool, you can use it to create downstroke and upstroke strums. And this is how you do it. If you go like this, and you start doing this, see? What I'm doing here? Now, that's not what you want to do. You want to go the other way around. Just hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard and do this. Look at that, look at that. There we go. And now, when I play it back, that sounds like a strum before after. And this way you can also create really fast strums or you can create a little bit slower strums. Let's go for a slower strum and go like this. Let's try it again. Or a faster strum like this. Alt. Don't forget the old key. Or let's make it even slower this one. And of course if you want you can do an upstroke strum. Let's try that now. I'm going to undo and go exactly the same thing, but instead I'm going to start from the top and do this diagonal line like that. And maybe for this one, I'm going to do the same, like a little bit slower. There we go. This was a little bit too much. Maybe I can just pull this one here like that. And one thing that I want to tell you is that your landing note should be the one that's on the grid. So if you want to hit bar number three, I would actually place these here, see? Like that, so. Because guitarists, they always compensate with their minds so they know that if they want to land on the strumming at the right place, they have to go a little bit early. Because if they start like this, then it's going to be out of time, okay? See, that's not right. You have to make sure that your landing note is on the grid and everything else comes before that. 
so this is how you can create strums inside Cubase using the trim tool. It's a really cool tool. It's way, way easier than going and doing this node by node. It's a little bit hard to do and it takes more time. We have every tool imaginable in Cubase likely to help us with these amazing things. And that's the reason why so many composers use Cubase and that's why so many people creating music for media use Cubase because it has all these tools. Before I leave the strumming, if you know how to play the guitar or if you can play a little bit of guitar, you know, some basic chords, I would totally recommend something like the jammy guitar. This is pretty much like a MIDI guitar, but you can really create realistic strumming and acoustic guitar parts or electric guitar parts with no effort. I've talked about this in a video that I've done in the past, so if you want to check it out, I'm going to link it right here. I've went really in depth on that video, but pretty much this is like a MIDI controller for Cubase. So now if I use the same instrument, the same guitar, I can just play and create strummings very easily. So let's play something. This is another alternative if you're a little bit comfortable playing simple chords on the guitar or if you're a guitarist and you want to create strumming parts, this is going to be the fastest way if you're not comfortable with a keyboard. If you want to pick one of these up, I'm going to have a link down below so that you can get a nice discount and by getting one of these, you are also supporting the channel. So, thank you in advance for this. Let's move on to the next point. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about is voicing. And voicing can really make or break your virtual guitar parts. Incorrect voicing can really give it away that your guitar parts are fake and that they've been produced on the keyboard by a keyboard player. So in order to show you this, I thought I might really bring a real guitar into play and show you a little bit how it works, okay? This will help you understand how to get the parts played right on the keyboard. So this is a real guitar and the thing that you will see most of the times, especially when you try to play chords, you will see that you have this kind of voicing. So, so this is a fifth fourth, so A, E is a fifth, E, A is a fourth, third, another third, and then a fourth. So you can see the spacing between the notes. So the intervals are a little bit larger in the low registers and they become a little bit smaller in the higher registers. So if I play like this, you know, I play like a three note chord, okay, A minor, but in the low registers, you don't get to see this kind of thing, you know, it's really hard to play as well, very bizarre, you will very rarely see a guitarist playing something like this, it doesn't really sound good to begin with, you know, so I'm playing the same chord here, and I can play the same chord here, okay, so here and here, you never, you never hear that. This is one of the things that many keyboard players do. They play triads in the low registers and that doesn't sound right. You have to leave some space in the lower registers and make your notes and your intervals more condensed in the higher registers. So, okay. Study guitar chords, take a tab, check how they are actually played on the guitar. So you get this. Okay, so this would be something like this. Totally playable. And that's why T guitar is so cool because you can even change the position. You can play this in many different places on the guitar, but with T guitar, you can emulate exactly how it's actually played on a real guitar. So I can play it like this, or I can play it like this. So, now there are some instruments like the T guitar that doesn't allow you to really make mistakes because if you try and play the thing that I showed you before, see, it doesn't allow you to do this. It actually creates a slide and this is actually correct. 
but depending on what guitar library you're using, this might not be available. The next thing that I want to talk about is expression. And of course, expression can mean a lot of things. It can mean dynamics, variations in the rhythm, but it can also mean vibrato and pitch band, bending, especially for electric guitars. Now, this might be a completely different video, but when you want to play electric guitar parts on the keyboard, there are some techniques that you should know. But the very first one, and the one that I actually bought my first expensive keyboard was this little guy right here, the pitch band. And that I needed so much because again, I was so jealous of my friends that had the Wami bars on their strats and I wanted to emulate this. And back then it wasn't so common for keyboards to have a pitch band. It was very expensive keyboards that had this. And I remember I had an old uh, Yamaha PSR that had a pitch band, I was so happy. So I started using it and I found out really soon that it's a really important aspect when you want to create realistic electro guitar parts. So, for example... So as you can see, when I'm playing here, I never leave one single note alone, you know? I don't do this all the time, but I'm trying to add a little bit of expression to my playing by using the pitch band. So let me play one melody in two ways. That's MIDI guitar, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat. It's never going to convince anyone. But if you add expression to your playing with pitch band, adding vibrato, adding these nice bends, then your performance gets transformed immediately. For example... See, I'm also adding quite a bit of vibrato there. By the way, if you happen to have the montage and you want to learn how to create sounds like this, uh, like uh, shreddy guitar sounds. I'm going to have a video right here. And basically, as you can see, I'm adding expression, 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 vibrato, bends. I don't articulate every note by playing it on the keyboard. That's what gives it away that it's fake. If you go, for example, what should we play? I don't know, let's play a random melody. Or I can play... And if you're a good keyboard player, you might be able to pull off things like hammer-ons and pull-offs, like... Or even sweeps. Stuff like this, you know, I mean, again, like I said, it depends on your skills as a keyboard player. But then again, if you're a good guitar player, you might use something like the jammy if you want to play these kind of sounds on a synth or something like this. The fifth and last thing that I want to talk about today is obviously something that you would expect. And this is the sound source, the libraries that you use, the instruments that you use. I showed you some of the guitars that I'm using here and it makes a big difference. Check out for things that add to the realism of your playing. For example, the T guitar has quite a few options and that's one of the reasons why I'm using it. It has hammer-ons, it has slides, it has chord playing. You can do a lot of things very, very easily even if you're not a keyboard player. For example, if I want to go to chords and I go like this, I can play a chord here. And I can trigger entire 
strummed chord progressions really easily. Sometimes I like to go solo and play solo. And see, I'm also doing a little bit of pitch bend here. And I like because it has fingered playing. And also pick style playing. But the other thing that I like about T guitar is that you have the hand positions. And this is extremely important. The sound changes completely depending on where you play the chords on the guitar, what frets you're playing them at. Because as you know, the same note on a guitar can be played in many different ways, where on the keyboard, if I want to play this A, that's the key, it never changes. On a guitar, you can play the same C or A, for example, in many different positions. So this hand position is really important because it will change the sound dramatically. So if I set it to manual and I start playing here, and then I move the position to 10, for example, 10th fret, so compare this to this one, for example. Okay, see the difference? Very, very different sound. It's night and day. So these are things that I'm looking for in a library. The same goes for the nylon guitar. I like the fact that it has all these little noises. And also, legato. And it goes without saying that uh, one of my favorite sources for guitar sounds is the Yamaha Montage. I've done an entire video playing my favorite sounds. I'm going to link it right here. And you can check it out for yourselves. It's really, really good and it plays effortlessly. It's great right out of the box. So these are just two of the libraries that I use, but I have a lot of libraries for guitars. There are many amazing libraries out there. So I would suggest that you find the one that resonates with you and you pick it out because it's worth it. So there you go, lovely people. These are my five tips for creating more realistic guitar sounds inside your DAW. In the comments down below, let me know if you have more tips that you can share. I love the community that we have done in the comments. Some of the comments that I get are really, really incredible. Lots of useful information. And I have to say, I'm really proud of you guys. I'm proud of the audience that I have. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and all the good stuff. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.